Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. I know I start most of my videos off saying, hey, I'm really excited to show you this, but... And I guess that's a good thing. I mean, if I wasn't excited to show you something, then why... I mean, if I'm not excited to make the video, why would you be excited to watch the video? Anyways, you guys know my, uh, my love affair with Benchmade's uh, 940 with the axis lock, right? Part of that is the overall package part, and the majority of it is the lock. This lock right here is the only lock I've ever carried that I've... I cannot remember a single time where I've ever had this lock fail on me. Um, it's never failed to, to keep the blade open. Um, it's never failed to be nice and smooth. Um, it's just uh, an incredible lock. Now, you know, I used to do an awful lot of... Uh, rehab type work, uh, rehab in houses, um, mobile homes, doing lots of mobile home plumbing, house plumbing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, especially with mobile home plumbing, you know, a lot, you spend an awful lot of time crawling in the dirt, um, and usually if somebody calls you there, it's because they've got a water leak, and water and dirt make mud. So you spend an awful lot of time crawling around in the mud and the dirt and water and it's generally pretty cold. And so um, even, even then, having this knife completely caked in mud, being outside in freezing temperatures, I've never had a problem with it. I have had problems with uh, liner locks, um, some with lockbacks, although not very many. Um, and the fact that you can open it and close it in one hand uh, without putting a part of your body in the path of the blade, um, it's just an absolutely incredible lock. So, found out the other day that uh, Benchmade's patent on the Axis lock apparently expired two years ago. So, um, looking on Amazon, uh, that appears to be the case because this right here is a Ganjo, um, I can't remember the model number of it, but it wears what they call a G-lock, which is a direct knockoff of the Axis lock. Um, they did a couple of things a little bit different between this knife and my 940s. A um, couple of things I like, a couple of things I don't really like. Um, but anyway, so I picked one, this one up. I think it was 25 bucks shipped to the, the house with uh, Amazon Prime. And um, stripped it down, took a look at it, stripped down one of my 940s and uh, just decided to go ahead and make one. I've been wanting to make one of these for quite a while, um, but there was a couple of things stopping me. First of all was the springs. They use the Omega springs, um, and I've never seen a place where you can purchase those. Um, so I ended up just grabbing some um, uh, spring wire and made a jig and, and bent up my own springs. And then the other thing was the, uh, the lock pin which I guess I might as well show you. This one right here is the one that I finished out yesterday. It is uh, pretty much a direct copy of the 940. I mean, I scribed out, you know, scribed out pat patterns for the liners. Um, I already had the pattern uh, for the blade from the other day when I made uh, the new blade for, for my personal one. And then when I made the blade for this one, I made two of them, you know, just in case I screwed one of them up, I'd still have the other one. Well, it went together so smooth that, um, that the first one just fit right in. So I still had the other blade. So it took me two days out here in the shop to build this knife, and that wasn't including forging the Damascus uh, for the blade, forging the blade out and everything. Um, this one had a slight warp to it, but honestly it's a prototype, so that part doesn't bother me very much. But anyways, that the majority of that two days was, like I said, building the jig for Ben in the Springs and um, uh, the lock pin. Um, along with, you know, figuring out the tap sizes for all the different screws, chasing down screws, um, you know, just figuring out the, the process to make it. But this thing went together insanely nice. I mean, even with building all the jigs and everything and learning, you know, how to make it, it went together slick. So I'm pretty excited to be, I'll be carrying this one um, every day for the next well, 
until I decided not to, um, and go ahead and offer in uh, this axis style lock uh, on custom orders. Um, I guess I can go ahead and give you a, a, a quick view. I'll bring you in closer so you can see the, uh, the different knives. Alright. Okay, so these are the two ones that I have by Benchmade. Carried them for for forever it seems like. Um, I said in that one video uh, the 10 plus year review of the Benchmade 940 I want to say it's been more like 12, 14, something like that. Um, so I've carried this pattern quite a bit. Uh, this one right here is the the Ganzo version with the G-Lock and you can see it's it's the same deal. Um, this one has got full liners whereas the 940's have got partial liners um, both, to, both to reduce thickness and then to reduce weight also. Um, I'll probably be making them with the full liner style uh, because honestly that's a lot of milling and I haven't figured out yet how to uh, uh, to mill all the slots in those you know and get them to match up right so sooner or later I'll probably do the the partial liners but that won't be for a while. But anyway, the, the Ganza, it's got uh, the full liners, it's got a bronze bushing in one side, and then a uh, some sort of a plastic bushing in the other side, which I'm not really sure why they did that, because that's one of the things I love about this whole style, is that it is so smooth. You know, I mean, I, I know you guys can't really... You probably can't really tell how hard I'm hitting it with my thumb, but you know I'm not hitting it very hard at all. I mean, a lot of times, even if you miss the thumb stud, you know, and you don't hit it at the exact right angle, that blade just pops open. And in the one that I made, it's the same way. I mean, I'm putting, I don't know, maybe, see that one was almost lock. I'm putting a pound, maybe two pounds worth of force on that thumb stud and it just pops open. No springs, no nothing. And a lot of that is due to those uh, those bushings in there. Now this one isn't quite as smooth as you know my uh, the other ones, but both of these knives have been around for so long that those bushings are worn in really nice and uh, it's just, you know, I mean they machine each other, machine, the surfaces machine each other you know to a perfect fit but this one is surprisingly smooth right out of the gate and this blade I forged that blade before I built my surface grinder attachment so I didn't surface grind it flat you know I this being a prototype I slapped it up on a grinder you know got it within five thousandths or so and called it good because like I said I'd be carrying it and I'd probably end up breaking it sooner or later anyway and then it'll end up in a cardboard box so um, so anyway, take that for what it's worth. But anyway, I've made it with the um, the full full liners, and then you can see right in there. Like I said, I was trying to get this together really fast. I didn't um, make a nice backspacer. I just grabbed a piece of G10 and a piece of stainless that came up to pretty close to the to the right thickness, um, and put it in there. But even on such a fast and quick and dirty build, it is insanely smooth. Um, when I built this one, um, you can see how much larger it is from a standard one. The reason for that is, um, you know, I took this one apart and then scribed, scribed a line around it to make the, the patterns for the different pieces. And anytime you do that, you know, you scribe a line around an object, and if you just grind to that line, um, then the the pattern grows a little bit so so that's why this one is so much bigger plus it's uh, a little bit thicker because it's got the full liners in there um, I'll probably go ahead and start making these a little bit smaller because um, this right here is it feels like a beast it really does and I guess for guys that like the tactical uh, beastly type knives you know that's cool but honestly I'm not a tactical kind of guy 
um, you know, I just need a, a nice classy folder to carry around every day. So anyway, um, yeah, so I got the, uh, um, the lock figured out on how to duplicate it. Um, got the, the springs, the jig to make the springs. Um, the, uh, the lock pin, I ended up um, using a pivot pin, uh, a threaded 3 16 pivot pin. And then I wish I would have kept one of the, I should have made a spare one of these caps. Uh, so that pivot pin is threaded for a 440 um, screw or for the screws on either side. Well, I took those screws and then put them away, grabbed a 440, uh, I think it was a three quarter inch long screw, ran it through the barrel, and then uh, turned these, I guess you would call them thumb caps, whatever, uh, turned them on the, the old south band out of uh, 01, I think. Um, so they've got an integral washer that the spring rides in and then the thumb stud is uh, turned on the outside and then they thread on to uh, that 440 screw on either side and then as long as you um, adjust your um, your pivot pin barrel or yeah <laughs> as long as you adjust the pivot barrel to the right length um, to where it just goes into the liner on both sides and it has a little bit of squeeze for a compression then you get that nice smooth um, one-handed opening and closing if you leave it too long what will happen is is that pin wants to rotate like this uh, that pin rotates like this as you pull down on this side right here and then you don't get that nice um, you know parallel movement but anyway, so now that I've got the lock figured out, um, you guys all know I absolutely love this lock, so I am really excited to, uh, I've got, I've got a couple of orders I need to get finished up. I've spent the last, um, probably two weeks, uh, you know, playing around with, with this axis lock, with the, uh, the toggle lock, you know, getting them ready. Um, I had a knife that I had to get, uh, finished up really fast it was kind of a, a rush order type job um, so I got that done and uh, I've got to get some orders finished up and then I will go ahead and start making uh, more of these pocket knives the slip joints the lock backs the lock backs with the toggle um, and the axis locks so anyway if you uh, have any questions or you want to put in a, a, an order for one of these different pocket knives um, there's a contact form on my website at caltoncutlery.com. Um, just go ahead and go in there, um, hit that contact form, uh, type in your question or you know your order or whatever, and then that'll send me an email. And then it keeps them all in one place so that uh, I don't lose them or forget them. You know that I had an order from YouTube or an order from uh, Instagram or whatever, um, and then I'll go ahead and, and get it on the books for you. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.